Hi, this is Michael with Research on the Road. Today, I'm going to give a tutorial for an absolute must-have app for anyone with an interest in geology, from a complete layperson to a professional. The app is called RockD, and it's available on iOS and Android. I've went ahead and downloaded the app, so let's go ahead and dive on in. So the screen that pops up when you first open the app is called the dashboard. And the dashboard displays the basic information about your current location, your physiographic region, the age and type of rock you're standing on with the name of the formation where applicable, uh, your coordinates, the elevation above sea level. Um, but there is a lot more we can do with this. First, let's check out the function you'll probably be using the most often, the map. When you tap on this map icon, it displays your location overlaying with a geologic map. Now these different colors you see represent different ages and types of rock. And you can zoom in and out and the map will adjust its scale accordingly. So when you zoom out, it gets more generalized. And when you zoom in, you can see more detail. Now here in Southern California, you're going to see a lot of these shades of yellow, which tells us that these rocks were deposited in the Quaternary period. Uh, that's very recent sediment. Most of the Quaternary sediment in this area is what we call alluvium. It's essentially soil that was laid down by rivers that have long since dried up. And when we tap on one of these areas, a screen pops up and gives us the type of rock, the age, the description, and lithology that is pulled from the literature. Now these black lines that you see crisscrossing everywhere are faults, um, which you expect to see a lot of in here in Southern California, but you'll also see them all over the world, no matter where you are, even if where you are is not tectonically active. And because that's a lot, that's because a lot of these faults are not they're not currently active, they're extinct. Um, however, here in Southern California, many of these faults are still active, which is why we see a lot of earthquakes. But to see something a little more geologically exciting, let's go up north a little bit to the San Bernardino Mountains. So here we start to see a few more colors. And since these are mountains, I would expect to see a lot of what we call igneous rocks or volcanic rocks. On geologic maps, different colors represent different ages. Green, for example, is typically used for Cretaceous rocks. And when we tap on one of these shades of green, we can see that these are indeed igneous rocks that are deposited in the Cretaceous period. When we tap on a different shade, we can see that it's a different type of rock um, that's deposited during the same time period. Or if we tap on a different color, we can see that it was from a different age. Now when we tap on this purple patch, purple is typically used for Triassic rocks, so we, when we tap on that, we can see that it's from the Triassic. So you get the idea. To explore this a little further, let's go to an area that's a bit more interesting geologically speaking, in my opinion. When we tap on this orange circle in the corner, a number of options are made available, including being able to toggle like satellite imagery and the bedrock map, like so. So it can, you can uh, orient yourself a little better with your surroundings. Now, if you get lost while exploring, exploring on your map, you can just tap my location and it will immediately snap back to, well, your location. So I'm gonna tap search for a place and go to Moab, Utah. So here we see a bunch of different colors that we didn't see in California. So blue is Jurassic rock, as we see here, middle Jurassic or late Jurassic. Now, all of these rocks are going to be uh, sedimentary, or most of them will be sedimentary. When we tap on different areas here, we can see that these units can actually be divided into formations. So this one is called the Napajo Sandstone. 
or the Curtis formation or the Morrison formation, which is my personal favorite geologic formation in case you were wondering. And we mentioned earlier in California that purple is used for Triassic rocks. When we tap on this, we can see that it's the same here in Utah. It's the early Triassic. Um, and this stuff, uh, the Permians are more red colors and pinks. We can see here. Now, a lot of really good geologic outcrops are in areas far from civilization. Let's say you're going to an area where you won't have cellar reception, or you don't want to use data, or you want to save your battery, because this app can be kind of power hungry. You can actually save an offline version of the area you're going to be in. So first find the area you're going to. Let's pick a smaller area. Tap this orange circle and tap offline maps. And we're gonna generate a new cache. That, does, that is this blue icon here. And so it's going to ask us to select the map area and hit this button at the bottom when we're done. And you can select, you can name your cache, rename the map, and select uh, what layers that you actually want saved. Um, I, I usually do all of them. Um, and this is going to differ like how big of a file it's going to save. But let's go ahead and create cache. And now you, and once this is downloaded, you can access the map to this area offline. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it, but you know, you just let it save, and you'll be able to access it no problem. So let's go back to my location. Another basic function of the map is the check-in feature, and you can check in by either tapping this blue icon here or uh, there's a button on the dashboard. Right here next to the map. And it, it takes you to uh, the same screen either way. So when you're checking in to a certain place, you can add a photo in the outcrop at the top here. You can write notes on the outcrop like, uh, so if as a geologist, I would note things like sediment size, or uh, types of bedding I see, or the thickness of certain beds, or fossils I see in the rock. You can also rate the quality of the outcrop, which is a little tool that I kind of like. Um, and this isn't necessarily meant to be a rating in the sense of, oh, this is a really pretty area, but it's more like this is a good example of this type of rock or lithology, or it's not such a good example. Now, by default, it marks your current location, but you can actually drag the pin elsewhere. So if you realize after the fact that you forgot to check into an area, I mean, I could drag this all the way to Utah when I, once I'm home from my trip um, and then put all these notes in. And finally, you can add additional observations, photos, um, even tags such as the type of rock or fossils present. And you can actually make your profile on this app and share this information with others. And once you're done filling out all this, you can tap submit in the upper right corner. I'm not going to because nothing's filled in. But let's see what else this app can do. So using the Brenton tool, you can take the strike and dip of a surface. The strike and dip are used to measure the orientation of a bedding plane. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much because it's, it, it is really useful information, uh, but you're really only going to be using this if you're a geologist. And if you're a geologist, you already know what I'm talking about by strikes and dips. But it is really cool that they have this, this tool in here. Moving on to the paleogeography tool. This shows your current location at different points in time. So here I am today in Southern California. But if we go back to the Cretaceous period by dragging the slider at the top, we can see that Riverside was right on the ocean. 
which means the property in my area would be a lot more expensive in the Cretaceous period than it is now. But let's go further back, a lot further back, such as the, maybe not that far back. Let's go to the Devonian period. So as you can see in the Devonian period, Southern California, as well as a lot of the world actually, um, was underneath a shallow sea. And this is gonna be the case for actually a lot of Earth's history, especially once we get to uh, pre-dinosaur times. Let's go back to the dashboard here. RockD will also let you know what fossils have been recorded within 20 kilometers of your location. So Riverside, California is not the best example because this, as you can see, there's only one occurrence. Um, other places might have dozens and dozens of occurrences, but we'll make do. So you can see that there is one mammal that's been found a little ways away from me. So when we tap on mammalia, we get some information about that group. Now, since mammals are such a broad group of animals, this is pretty general information. It's not super helpful. But if we scroll down a bit, we can see that there is an occurrence in Chirupa Valley. When we tap on more info, it takes us to a page on Paleobio database that we can, and we can see that the mammal found is Mammut pacificus, also known as the Pacific Mastodon, which is actually a recently described species. You can see it was described in 2019 there. Now, when we go back to the main fossil taxa screen uh, and tap on subtaxa, it will list the constituents of whatever broad categories we saw previously. So the broad categories could include mammals, reptiles, amphibians, dinosaurs even. And we tap on subtax and we will see the specific mammals, amphibians, reptiles, whatever that are found. So in more fossil rich areas, here we might see many, many types of mammals, rabbits and rodents and deer, sloths, armadillos, mammoths, mastodons, all of that stuff. Um, and they would all appear here under mammalia. And keep in mind that all this information changes depending on where we currently are. So it is especially fantastic for road trips. Finally, RockD provides an encyclopedia of descriptions of minerals which can come in handy if you're in the field and can't remember the difference between calcite and dolomite, for example. So that's a brief overview of the basic functions of ROCD. Again, this is one of the best, nay, it is absolutely the best geology app out there, hands down, and it is absolutely a required download for anyone interested in their local geology. Once again, this has been Michael with Research on the Road. Have a great day, everybody.